lectures fully in English and greater opportunities to take part in international exposure activities. Our department also offers double degree programs. These particular programs are held in collaboration with the University of Queensland and RAN School of Business. Students will study at ITS and partner universities to get two undergraduate degrees. We provide students the opportunities to take international mobility activities such as excursion studies. short course programs, international internships, and many others. Our department will warmly welcome foreign students to experience these international exposure opportunities. To support those activities, Business Management ITS have several international partners. There are two laboratories to promote researches at Business Management ITS, which are Business Analytics and Strategy Laboratory and Entrepreneurship and Small Medium Enterprise Laboratory. Business Analytics and Strategy Laboratory or the BAS Laboratory focuses on Operation Management, Strategic Management, Finance, and Accounting. There are 10 lecturers and researchers associated with the BAS Laboratory. Business Analytics and Strategy Laboratory have several assistants to support its day-to-day -day operations. Entrepreneurship and Small Medium Enterprise Laboratory or the ESME Laboratory focuses on marketing, entrepreneurship, human resource management, performance measurement, and data envelope analysis. There are nine lecturers and researchers associated with the ESME laboratory. The Entrepreneurship and Small Medium Enterprise Laboratory also supported by several assistants to carry out the laboratory <laughs> programs. Our department have more than 500 alumni. They work at different fields and industries such as national and multinational companies, government, or even became an entrepreneur. Let's join Business Management ITS and be the future business leader. Thank you.
Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining our Zoom meeting this afternoon. Before we start our event today, please allow me to share the protocol of video conference. First, please kindly adjust your name or ID screen using the format your name underscore department or public. Second, during the video conference, we kindly ask all participants to turn on the mute mode or turn off the audio and only turn on the audio when MC or moderator give the suggestion. Third, we would like to recommend all participants to adjust the seat position comfortably and prevent the backlight effect. Fourth, please ensure your network has a stable internet connection for your convenience during the event. The last, we recommend all participants to use a headset or earphone for clear and better sounds. In addition, we kindly ask all participants to fill the online attendance through the, the link provided in the chat room. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this event will be start soon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good morning to all of you. I would like to welcome you all the International Guest Lecture Series bring the topic for today's lecture, price elasticity and the effect on government revenues on this beautiful Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. And maybe the blessings of the Almighty God be with us. My name is Dennis Wara from the Department of Business Management will be the MC for today. Um, ladies and gentlemen, before we going to the main event, I would like to invite one of our lectures, Mrs. Dewi Saktia Ardiantono, to join us and lead today's agenda. For Mrs. Dewi, we ask you. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon for all. Good and afternoon. a good, a very good morning to Dr. Ilsa Arch here. Hello to you all. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen and our beloved students, so now we have an international guest lecture series and uh, uh, for today's uh, topic, there will be about the price elasticity. But before we go through the uh, presentations of our honorable uh, international guest lecture, Dr. Ilse, I'd like to introduce a little bit about our international problem that we have in the Department of Business Management. Since uh, in this uh, in these presentations, not only the participants from our department, but also from other university also will join with us, such as University of uh, Universitas Negeri Surabaya, UNESA, and also UPN from Surabaya as well. Uh, in these presentations, not only participants from our department, Okay, have you already seen my screen? Yes. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, and also our beloved students, uh, we are proudly present our international undergraduate program starting from this year. So we have uh, international undergraduate programs uh, for the first batch in 2020. And then here are a little bit introductions of our department, Dr. Ilse. So here in the business uh, management department, we have uh, four majors. The first one is about operations management and business analytics. And then the second one is about the marketing management and entrepreneurship. The third one about uh, human resource management and also about the accounting and finance management. There's a functional management that we have here in the uh, department of business management of ITS. 
And also, we do have the two options of double degree program here in our department. The first one is the double degree with the Rennes School of Business in France and also the University of Queensland. So in the future, we do, uh, we do hope that we can have a double degree as well with the VPS University in Belgium. Yes, indeed, and maybe. Here, yes, I'd love to. And here are our international partners that we have. Uh, one of them is our best friend, uh, Pipes University of Applied Science in uh, Belgium, because uh, we have some collaboration as well uh, since uh, years ago. So uh, there are some lectures coming from Pipes University to our department. And also uh, there is an internship student, one of uh, the Pipes students coming to ITS to do the internship program. And also in the company, uh, in the Belgium-based company, actually, uh, stayed in Surabaya. So we have a kind of a combina combinations of internship and we match the student from ITS and also students from uh, Vives University to work together during the internship. I think it was for three months. So it's a quite a long journey here. And then now in this semester, actually, uh, we do hope uh, we can see each other directly because this pandemic, so yeah, thousand miles away can comes up together and now we can meet here virtually. I hope in the future we can uh, have a live sessions again with the VPS University. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, International Guest Lecture Series 2020 is one of our international programs in the Department of Business Management. So we would like to share about uh, how was the uh, global knowledge is going. So the student also can open up uh, also the opportunity that the uh, other universities provided. So just here for one of our international program in International Guest Lecture Series. We invite some uh, lecturers from uh, overseas university to give lectures. So it's, it's about three weeks, three week series. So this week, this week will be the uh, second week series. And uh, from Monday to Friday, we have a very special guest lecture coming from Pipes University in a series from, uh, and then Dr. Isa is the second one. Tomorrow, uh, yesterday, we have uh, Dr. Philip in the marketing management, and then now we have a Dr. Ilse. So, welcome to ITS. Thank you very much for spending your time, Dr. Ilse. So, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Ilse is one of the lecturer in the uh, Fifth University of Applied Science, and her majority is in a, in a financial topics. And then for today lecture, she would like to deliver uh, some lecture about the price elasticity. And uh, for for the background of the participants here, Dr. Ilse, uh, there are some students coming from the microeconomic classes. I believe that they have already uh, excited to hear about the, how was the price electricity is going and then how is the how is the global global company affected toward the price elasticity itself so for dr ilse the time is yours thank you very much uh Ms. Amy, to introduce me and i'm uh, very excited uh joining you in your international uh, week and giving a lecture of my own. Well, for me, it's good morning, ITS, because here it is uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, or 8.30 it is already, okay? For you, it's, uh, it's afternoon. Um, I'm going to share yes. my screen. I hope this will function. Okay. Yes, it works so, perfectly. It works perfectly. Okay, we can uh, start off. Well, good morning. My name is indeed Ilse Art, and I'm going to uh, tell you something about microeconomics and the price elasticity of the demand and the supply curve. Um, does it go to the second screen? Not yet, maybe it's coming. 
Visual. Visual in the first screen. No, it. Yes, it works. Yes, yes, yes. We are back on track. So, maybe for starting, do we always worry about uh, the price of products? Eh? Um, that's, that's actually the first question to, to ask you if you want to know something about price elasticity. Each uh, of you can for sure imagine a product uh, where customers don't worry about price. Eh? If the price drops, they don't buy masses of that kind of a product, and when the price increases, they don't stop buying it. Eh? Um, but then there are products where customers are very sensitive to what uh, the, the change of price uh, can do, and the price fluctuations. Eh? Well, in microeconomics, that phenomenon eh, is called uh, price elasticity, and we explain it in a scientific way. So we are going to make a study about how it's possible that in some products, uh, customers don't worry about the price, and in some, for some products, customers are very worried about uh, the price. So that's what we call price elasticity of the demand and the supply curve, because we can also see it um, for the supply curve. It's not only for the demand curve. It's not only for what customers uh, think, what customers do. It's also what uh, what, users, what suppliers uh, do uh, if they are seeing price fluctuation. Um, okay, but what do we know already? Eh? So what we know is, is the following. Eh? Um, that's something you, you have to understand very well when I'm going to uh, continue my uh, lecture. Um, that when prices uh, rise, uh, here in my uh, figure, you see that prices uh, are increasing or going up. You see an effect on the quantity of the demand, uh, what uh, customers ask for that product, and the quantity of it it will drop. So the relation is when prices rise, the quantity of the demand will uh, uh, decrease or will drop. And in a graphical way, we are talking of uh, a movement along the demand curve. The demand curve is, is uh, going down. Uh, and the independent variable here is the price curve. So we change something about the price, there's happening something, prices are changing, prices are going up. Here in my example, and we see an effect on the quantity, quantity is dropping. So the demand is going down and we have a movement along the demand curve. When you are seeing uh, the other sides in our market, and we're going to see uh, the side of our suppliers, of our producers, when we see the, the same effect, our prices are uh, increasing, our prices going up, we see an effect on the quantity that our suppliers want to offer, and it's going to increase also. So the effect is, the relation is when prices are going up, the quantity of our supply is going up. And so we see that the supply curve is one who is going up. The effect that I showed you is an effect along the supply curve. Okay. So there are our two uh, ingredients, if you want to say it like that, are two ingredients for uh, our uh, market. That's one hand our demand curve. What does the customers do? And on the other hand, the supply curve. What are the producers, the suppliers do for some product. We know that we can uh, go a little bit further. But do you, do you also know this? Um, I put a, two terms, a Mentimeter, in my presentation. So I don't know if it's, uh, it's a case in, in ITS or in, in Rabaya that you use your smartphone during your lessons. But 
for now you can or you may and i um ask you to use your um, smartphone and go to www.menti.com when you're on the site you can put in the code eight three four three eight eight and again eight or you can scan the QR code that's on my presentation. If you're going to Mentimeter, I'm going to start I hope it will work. No. Okay. <laughs> I used the wrong one. If that's the correct one. So if you use your smartphone and you go to the website, the URL menti.com, you can put in, you can use the code that's on my PowerPoint presentation. And I'm seeing that the answers are getting in. If students of Indonesia receive more pocket money, what will the demand for smartphones do? So if your parents decide to give you more pocket money so you have a bigger income, what will the demand or your demand for smartphones do? The answers are getting in. I give you a little bit more time so everybody gets the opportunity to give his or her answer. And it's amazing, isn't it? I'm teaching here from Belgium and you are sitting over there in Surabaya. Yeah, thousand miles away. <laughs> Miles and miles away, answering my question. <laughs> so it's, it's indeed it's very amazing yeah. that we can do that yeah. uh, in this time. Yeah, actually, the answer is still flying from Surabaya <laughs> to Belgium. <laughs> yes. Luckily, luckily, we can uh, we can do that. We can uh, we can give a teach a, a lecture. On a virtual way, so I can join your international staff week. I'm seeing we have already 50 answers. Um, Miss Derry, can you can you tell me how many participants are uh, joining us in our lecture? Yeah, there are about a hundred. Mm, okay, okay. So students, can you access the menti.com already? I see that the, the number of answers is, uh, is increasing mm -hmm. slowly. Now we are 58.
answers that we already have collected. Now, if some of the students um, haven't participated, the first question, uh, they can for sure um, answer the second one. So it's not that you didn't participate the first one that you can't, that you're not allowed to answer the second one. So it's not a problem if you're not uh, joining us in the first question and if you were looking a little bit how it uh, works or something like that. But indeed, number is still rising, 68 for the moment. The more answers we get, the more we will see that everybody did understand it very well. It increasing very slowly here. Yeah. Yes, here it is indeed. We have for 71. Well, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, put the answer on my screen. Uh, I hope it will uh, work. Uh, Dr. Ilso, could you please uh, maximize the screens of the Menti? Is it possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 it's possible. So you can see a little bit more of it. Yeah, that's. Perfect. Okay, okay. Okay. So we have uh, 72 answers. Thank you for that uh, already uh, to participate to uh, our uh, to my uh, mentee uh, meter. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. My results. Okay. Okay, we have for now 77 uh, answers, uh, 78, they are still coming in. I didn't uh, uh, block the, the question, uh, so we are see, seeing it uh, coming in, uh, in uh, for life, uh, lifetime. So for now we have 79 uh, answers, um, 79 students who uh, answered that uh, the demand will increase for smartphones. Indeed, uh, uh, if the, the income right. is, uh, is uh, increasing, then the demand for products will indeed also increase. And there is someone who hates smartphones. Okay. Um, well, it's, it's indeed, it's a pity, but I can tell you that that's the future, the smartphone. Yeah. Um, Okay, I'm going to back to my uh, presentation. Congratulations to you all uh, for the right uh, answer. When we put the information that we receive now in uh, a graphic presentation, new presentation, then it looks like this. Um, indeed, there is uh, happening something in our uh, economy. Uh, the income will uh, increase, and so. Uh, Customers are willing to buy more, to buy more uh, for the same price. So our demand curve is shifting to the right, and for the same price, customers will demand a, a bigger, a higher quantity. Now the market equilibrium uh, exists there where the demand and the supply curve uh, crosses each other. And when we meet our uh, suppliers, our producers, they are only willing to produce more if price will rise, okay? So I repeat that they're happening something in our economy, the income of our customers will uh, increase. So suddenly customers are willing to buy more by the same price. The reaction of the suppliers, on the other hand, is that they are willing to produce indeed more if prices will rise. And so we reach a new market equilibrium when we are seeing that there is a higher price and a higher quantity, okay? So the new market equilibrium has a higher price and a higher quantity. Okay, go back to our Mentimeter. Uh, 
that you are Mentimeter. You will see on your smartphone that there is a second question. Okay. The second question. Uh, 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 now I thought. Yeah, I showed already the answer. That's not proper, of course. If the producers of solar panels receive subsidies, what will the supply do? Okay, putting in the answers, please. So, the second one is, if the producers of solar panels receive subsidies, they're getting money from the government to produce some solar panels, so their costs are high to develop solar pa uh, panels, and so they're getting some income from government. We call that subsidies. What will the supply do? You see, you're entering some answers already. 24 answers to my question. If you put out Mentimeter, you can join us again. You just go to the uh, website of menti.com and you put in again the same code as uh, you did before. So 8343 And you get the question, the second question. So it was a little bit too fast. I already put the answers on my screen. Okay, um, the answer is indeed, if producers uh, get a, a subsidy from our government, what will they do with uh, the supply? They are willing to offer more uh, solar panels panels to, to the market, okay? So there is indeed an increase. Let's get back to my uh, presentation. My presentation is gone. Okay, here you are. The graphic representation of the question I ask you by Mentimeter is indeed when you are uh, getting subsidies as a, a producer, as a supplier, you are willing, it's a shift of the supply curve to the right and you are willing to offer for the same price, you are willing to offer more uh, of solar panel, panels than before the, um, the subsidy. Now, if indeed you are willing to uh, offer more, then the question is, well, how will the customers react? Customers indeed will react and are willing to buy more if prices decline. So indeed you are coming to a new market equilibrium where prices uh, decline and the effect on our quantity, on our new market quantity, is uh, an increase. So prices drop, prices will drop, and the quantity will increase, okay? So what we know for now is something you already have known uh, before, and we are going a step further in our explication, and we're going to see what's the effect of price elasticity. Red clip repeated one more time. When we have a demand, uh, a supply curve, excuse me, when we have a supply curve, who will uh, shift to the left, there is happening something in our economy. And for the same price, we will see, I have the same price, we will see that um, producers are willing to offer less okay so we have a shift to the left not to the right anymore because it's shift to uh, the left 
from for uh, this uh, presentation. For the same price, for the same price, we will see that uh, suppliers are um, only want to offer less uh, of that product. So the quantity drops. The quantity drops. A product becomes scarcer. Yeah? So it's it's um, more rare that the the product appears in the market. Suddenly they they can't find uh, enough a quantity of that kind of a product. Yeah? It's uh, it becomes scarcer. So if that's the fact, customers will react. Okay, and they will react by putting the price up. So what we see in the new equilibrium is that prices are um, increasing, prices are increasing, and the quantity drops. What we see here is that there is a change in our um, supply curve. There is a shift in our supply curve. Our uh, supply declines. Okay, and we see that price is uh, rising, and we see that our quantity is falling down. If we compare the two components here, the change in price and the change in our quantity, we can see this. We see that um, the, the, the drop in our quantity is less than the rise in our price. When we want to explain it more mathematically, okay, you will see that the relative um, increase in, in price is far more, is uh, greater, is bigger is than the, the, the drop in the change in our, the relative change in our quantity. Okay, so if you see this, you see that the change, the relative change in our price is far more than the relative change in our quantity. Let's do that again. I see that you are very thrilled that you know it already. So let's do it again. Here we have our supply change. Our supply curve is uh, shifting to the left. There is a drop in our um, uh, on our supply. Okay, the same amount of before. Okay, that's very important that you see that that we have the same shift, something that happens again, the same thing that happens again, but for another product. And what can we see? Indeed, we already uh, told you that price will rise in our new market equilibrium. Price will rise in our new market equilibrium. And the other parameter is our quantity. Our quantity will uh, fall back, will drop in our new market equilibrium. For that, it's the same like the situation before, but what's different is that if you see the relative change in our price and the relative change in our quantity, that the relative change in my price is far more smaller than the relative change in our uh, quantity. So, the relative change in our quantity is far more than the relative change in our price. We call that the demand curve in situation A, in the first situation, is less elastic than the demand curve in situation B. B. Okay? You see that if the reaction on the price is smaller, we're talking about a less elastic um, demand curve than when the reaction on the price is far more greater than in the first situation. Okay. Here we are calling for a less elastic price elasticity of the demand curve. Here we are calling a, a great price elasticity for the demand curve. So the difference between is that the only difference is how the demand is reacting on the um, on our um, price uh, changes. Uh, here, demand curve is more steeper. It's more vertical. Here, the demand curve is shallower. 
is more to uh, horizontal, okay? More to the horizon, okay? So the demand curve is uh, in this uh, situation less elastic than the uh, fact in situation B. You're looking like this for now? Okay. If you're looking like this, you need an example. Okay. Let's take an example uh, in our economy. Okay. Harvest. Weather is fine. Weather is um, is, uh, is, is great for the moment. And um, when we are um, putting the harvest, uh, we're get, gathering the harvest, okay, um, prices of our uh, uh, raw materials will drop. And so producers of bread are willing to produce more bread. The price of their raw materials, uh, when you are uh, having a great harvest, and the price of your raw materials will drop and you are willing to produce more bread. You can produce more bread by the same price because your costs are, uh, your overhead costs are uh, falling down. If you want to produce more bread, the question is how will your customers react? Okay, your customers are willing to buy more bread if price if the prices of bread will uh, drop and uh, will uh, decrease. Okay, so you see a decrease in uh, the price of bread, and there is a bigger amount of bread uh, sold in our economy. Question here is: Are you prepared to buy a lot of more bread when prices indeed um, decrease? If you are going to eat twice as much bread because price indeed is falling down, you're looking like this at the end of the week or the month, isn't it? There is a limitation in eating bread. You're not willing to buy so much more bread than uh, you were before because of um, the decline in uh, price. And so we are saying that. The price elasticity of bread is very small. The demand curve is steeper. We have the example as in situation A in my slides. Okay. Okay. You do understand it. You are uh, indeed um, aware of how it functions. Are you? Okay. Another example, maybe. Another example, indeed, for the guys among us, a pretty car for the girls among us, lovely diamonds, okay? So imagine that um, for some reason, um, price will collapse for such a car or the price of this pretty diamonds will collapse. Are you willing to buy one? Okay. If it's possible, are you willing to buy maybe two of them? Are you willing to buy uh, three of them? Well, maybe in a different color for what the car is uh, concerning. And the diamonds, well, you can have a ring in several shapes. Um, so you will buy more of them. I can fill the trail up of here in up till here in, uh, in Belgium, and you are indeed willing to buy more of them if prices change of these kind of products. And so the price elasticity of uh, the uh, demand for, for luxury products is bigger. And so the demand curve is shallower, is more to the horizon. And um, it's, this is an example of the situation Okay, where we have a more uh, elastic, elastic price of the demand curve. Okay. okay, we can ask for now what determines the elasticity of um, the demand curve. Okay? Indeed, it's for, uh, first of all, the need for a product. Uh, if you are going to see uh, to to basic products, products you you really need to to stay alive 
Uh, you are not willing to buy more of them, but you are not willing to buy less of them because you need bread to survive. You need food to, to eat, to, to get alive, but you're not willing to buy twice as much um, uh, when prices decline. And if prices rise, well, you are uh, going to um, make make some room in your in your budget to buy them as well because you really need them. On the other hand, the possibility of finding a, a substitute for a particular product, a substitute, you can replace it by something else. If you find a similar product to the original, the increase in the price will bring out a major change in the quantity. It's a high price uh, elasticity. If you can find some other product uh, for, uh, and it's, it's cheaper, and it's the same quality, it tastes the same, it, it's, uh, it's fulfilling your needs in the same way, okay, you are putting up the, the, the product that's becoming uh, more expensive, you're going to neglect that, and you are going to choose for the substitute uh, immediately. And then you will see that an effect on the price of that original product that an effect on the price will have a big impact on the quantity when we're finding a similar product. Okay. There are uh, lots of other reasons um, why uh, uh, some products are more uh, sensitive to price changes than others, and you can make a study of your own um, um, for knowing which kind of uh, factors that determines the price elasticity okay i'm wondering do you really understand it okay so do you really understand it i'm going to ask again to uh, get your smartphones and go to the website of menti.com and put in the code 29 22 81 16. And I'm now going to try that you don't see the answers yet. Okay, which demand curve has the largest price elasticity? Five already put their answer. Give their answer. Eight. Come on, you can do. You can do it all. You can do it. I know for sure. Okay. Okay, which one has the largest price elasticity? Just thinking about one line sets that the definition is of price elasticity. Situation A, we have in situation A, a shift of the uh, demand curve. Okay, a shift in our demand curve to the right. It means that by the same price, by the same price, customers are uh, uh, demanding more, are willing to buy more. They're willing to buy more uh, by the same price. It can be, why? Because uh, there is an increase in their income, okay? So for the same price, they're willing to buy more. How does the suppliers react? How does the producers react? The producers will are willing to produce more if prices increase. So you're seeing in the new market equilibrium that indeed prices has changed and the, the, the quantity has um, increased also. Situation A is similar to situation B. We have a shift of our demand curve to the right. Indeed, prices are increasing. 
demand is increasing as well in the new market equilibrium. Okay, what's the difference between the two of them? That the way of our demand curve is different. You see that the demand curve here in situation A is shallower, more to the horizon, or like that. And you see that the demand curve in situation B is steeper, is more vertical. And so now the question is the price elasticity of the demand curve, of the supply curve, excuse me, of the supply curve, which is more elastic. Is it situation A, this situation where we have a small price chain with a relative large change in our quantity, or is it situation B, where you have a price change but relatively a smaller change in quantity, which is more elastic, which is more elastic, A or B? Okay, we have 46 answers. Let me get to the correct answer. Uh, what did you, did you students answer on this question? Which of the demand curve has the largest price uh, elasticity? If we're going back, most of you, 28 are answering A. Situation A is, uh, has a bigger price elasticity than situation B, okay? 19 of you answering that it's situation B. And there is one who says, I don't know, you have to come over to explain it once more. My dearest, dearest students, I'm willing to come over. And so when COVID is over and when COVID is done, I'm coming over to Indonesia, to Surabaya. I'm going to explain it to you. Thank Let you. Let me over, okay? <laughs> For now, the right answer is D. Okay, which one is more uh, elastic? Which uh, demand is, uh, has a bigger price elasticity? Is it situation A or situation B? Well, look like this. You have a little change in price and the reaction is a big change in our, in, in our quantity of our supply. You have a large change in price and the reaction is rather low, okay? So where is the uh, elasticity, elasticity? The biggest is in situation A. You have to look at it like this. You can pull big or hard on it, okay, in situation A. The reaction is big, so it's very elastic. In situation B, B you see that we have already a big price uh, change and the reaction is rather low so it's not really elastic it's, 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 it's rather tough for itself so the correct answer is uh, situation A. Congratulations to you all. Your audience is applauding for you well that's only me of course but nevertheless you did it great. Okay now we have um this uh, uh, uh right um we take the next step what's the effect of the price elasticity on our budgets okay um so the same situation there's happening something uh and our uh, supply curve is shifting to the left okay so for the same price we are willing for the same price we are willing to offer less Okay, customers will react. They are uh, indeed uh, seeing that products are getting uh, scarcer, so they are uh, putting price up. So in the new market equilibrium, we have a change of price, price is increasing, and there is a reaction on the quantity, the quantity will drop. Okay, how is the effect on our budget? Well, first of all, you have to know how we calculate our budget. Our budget is calculated 
like this. We multiply price by our quantity. Then we know how much money we spent on that product. That is the definition of our budget. Budget is, is how much of our money did we spend on that product. We have to know what's the price of one product, and we have to know how much uh, of that product uh, do we want to buy. So we multiply the price by our product. Okay, what's happening here is that you see that the price will increase very much. We have a big rise of our price, and we are seeing that the effect is the quantity will drop. But due to the fact that we have a less elastic demand price, a less elastical uh, price for our demand curve, okay, the demand curve is steeper, okay, we see that indeed the um, um, the uh, price uh, increase is uh, smaller than uh, the price decrease. Okay, what's the effect then on our budget? Okay, our budget will indeed um, rise. We are going to spend more of our income to that product. Okay. Um, you have a rise in our in the budget, okay? Because of the big rise in our price over here, it overcompensates the quantity who is getting smaller, okay? It overcompensates. This will um, has more effect on our budget. So we are going to spend more um, on uh, this kind of product. like this okay so you see here the price is going up we have a big uh, increase in our price the reaction is uh, quantity getting smaller but the reaction is very small okay so in the end you will spend indeed more of our uh, of our budget on this product okay Okay, so if we know that, then we can ask another question. You see that, um, can we stop smoking? Can government uh, let us stop smoking? Can government influence our behavior, our smoking behavior? And it's something that we uh, have seen in Belgium uh, for the, the last decades uh, that's uh, happening. Uh, first of all, we have a shift in our supply curve. Our supply curve is shifting to the left. People, um, suppliers will offer less quantity for the same price or you can say that if for the same quantity, if there are taxes to pay on smoking, on tobacco, on smoking products, if there is a tax to pay for the same quantity, um, producers uh, are as asking a higher price, okay? So when there are taxes, government will, um, will um, demand taxes on tobacco on smoking products, you will see a shift in the demand curve to the left. There is a reaction from the customer side, okay? They see that prices will increase and so the demand is uh, dropping. Question here, what, how much will the, the quantity drop? as a reaction to the rise of the price, to the increase of the price. Well, let's suppose in situation A, that we have a demand curve that's very steep. So the price elasticity is very small. Can we explain that? That the reaction 
the falling back of the quantity is very small, relatively, easy, uh, relatively to what's happening in the change of price. Can we explain that? Yeah, maybe we can, because smoking is an addiction. So if there is a change in price, prices will rise, will increase, going up. You're not prepared to stop smoking because you're, you're teased, you, you really need the cigarettes. It's an addiction. Okay, so you see that the reaction on the price increases is very small. The demand curve is very steep. So the price as an elasticity is very small. If you see that, or you see this, you see this. The other situation, situation B, the same thing happens. Government uh, asks for more taxes on tobacco, on um, a smoking product. So there is a shift to the left of the demand curve. In the new market equilibrium, the new market equilibrium that you're seeing over here, you see that price indeed has increased. Price is going up for a little bit. And you see the reaction on the quantity. Quantity dropped very much, decreased a lot. So the reaction in the quantity is far more higher than here in situation A. Here in this new situation, you see that although they have an addiction, people are trying to stop smoking. They are going to, to, um, to get some help from family or in the medical um, uh, world, you are going to find some help to finally stop smoking because, because it's coming very expensive. Okay, so what we're seeing over here is that there is indeed a great reaction on the uh, change of price. Uh, here, price elasticity, of the demand curve is high. You see that the demand curve is shallower. Okay, so if you want to project it to the government's earnings in the first situation, where the reaction of the price has a very small reaction in the quantity, you will see that here the rise in price is bigger the drop in quantity is very small, government gets a lot of income. Because your budget, what you spend on smoking products, on tobacco, is getting bigger. So government gets more income. But does it reach the, the main goal? Namely, they want that people stop smoking. No, they didn't reach it because the falling back in quantity is very little. And on the other hand, in situation B, you will see that because of the small increase in price, you will see a large decrease in our quantity. Quantity will drop very much. And you will see that what we spent on smoking products is very small. It's getting smaller. There's little of our income that we spent on smoking products. So the revenues or what uh, government earns on smoking products is decreasing. And did government reach its goals? Yes, they did. Because lots of people stop smoking. So if you are a government and 
you really, really want that people stop smoking, then you first of all have to know how elastic is my demand curve? How sensitive are the customers to changes in our price? If you're in situation A, you will know that if you're decreasing, increasing your prices, if price is getting higher and higher, it will have a small effect on our quantity. So you have really put the price very, very high to have a reaction that people finally stop smoking. If you know that your demand curve is shallower, you know as a government that you only have to uh, increase taxes a little bit. So prices have to increase a little bit and people will stop smoking. Okay. Well, what we saw in Belgium is that in the first years, there were taxes on smoking uh, products. And the reaction was indeed that uh, people um, didn't stop smoking. They just paid the higher price because smoking was an addiction. And the goal of our government was to finally stop smoking, to finally uh, decrease the, the, the smoking and the, the, the production of tobacco uh, in general. So that was the goal. So in the first decades, they, they, didn't, they didn't reach their goal because in the end, they knew that we were in situation A. But then after some time, they increased and increased and increased the taxes. And then suddenly they reached the point that people said, oh my gosh, it's so expensive to smoke that uh, I'm going to stop smoking, okay? So indeed, when your demand curve is very steep, when there is less price elasticity on the demand curve, you really, really, really have to rise up your uh, taxes to finally uh, stop, uh, to finally reach your goal. And the goal was that uh, people have to stop smoking, okay? So you have to do a lot of research, research in, in front uh, of making uh, sure, as a government, that your goals are reached when you uh, put some taxes or subsidies. It's the same in, in for subsidies. If you are get, giving subsidies to consumers or to producers, to suppliers, um, you have to know for in the first uh, case how sensitive are the customers and the suppliers to price. Are they very sensitive? Okay, then you have a big reaction. Are they not sensitive to uh, price changes? Then the reaction uh, is not big. And the only thing you reach then is that you get more uh, incomes as a government. Now, maybe that's a goal also for government, maybe, that they have more income in the end. Who knows? Okay. You were a great audience. <laughs> I didn't see you. I'm sorry. I'm very pity that I didn't see you all. Um, but you, um, you you joined me in Mentimeter. It's the first time that I'm giving an international lecture uh, from my study room here in Belgium to an audience in Indonesia. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very excited uh, also. I'm a little bit nervous also. I'm teaching already for more than 10 years, but well, I'm still a little bit uh, nervous. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for joining me in Mentimeter. And if you have questions, I'm here to answer them. Um, I'm giving back. Um, the play to uh, Ms. Dee. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you. Thank you very much for Dr. Ilse for the very great presentations. Yeah. So students, Dr. Ilse has already explained to us in very detail about the price elasticity. She mentioned about the, how is the reaction on the price if uh, the demand is higher or the demand is less. And also she also mentioned about the, if we are a policymaker, 
what should we do? So we have to make sure that we understand about the concept of the elasticity. So in the future, maybe you will be uh, the chief uh, of the company or the uh, policymaker of the government, you will keep in mind about the elasticity itself. So guys, now it's time for you to ask the questions. I believe that Dr. Ilse would love to answer it. Yes, of course, of course, with a lot of pleasure. But maybe I explained it very well. <laughs> you already explained it very detail. Okay, I think there is a uh, one questions. I can read it for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is a question from Bahawan. So what do you think some product portraying in elastic in certain region or country, but opposite in the other region or country? Or maybe, oh. pa, yeah, Pak Bahawan, you can ask directly. <laughs> is Pak is pa <laughs> Bahawan <laughs> here? <laughs> okay, yeah. Mana yang buka? Udah kelihatan belum? Oke. Oke. Okay. 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 Uh, did you hear my sounds clearly, Dr. Ilse? Yes, I can hear you very well. Can you repeat oh my God. your question? Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Hmm. Correct. Could you? Could you hear my sounds clearly? I can hear you very loud and clearly. Thank you. Can you repeat your question? Okay. Uh, I just asked regarding the product uh, in elastic. I think most of us already know about the purchasing power parity is regarding the how the product could uh, can be affordable uh, for any region or country. So my question is that if you're mentioning about the uh, product in elastic, uh, elasticity and versus in elastic. Uh, do, what do you think about the, uh, this kind of phenomenon? For example, uh, rice. In Indonesia is mostly uh, main, main, main food of Indonesia is rice, but sometimes it's quite sensitive into uh, the price. However, if we saw the price in uh, other countries, that would be uh, inelastic. So my question is that what do you think about these kind of phenomena and how would be impact to the uh, shifting demand between those countries? Yeah, it's, an, it's a, a very interesting question. Um, thank you for that. Um, well, indeed, if you're going to look at uh, different countries, you will see that price elasticity of the same product you call rice as an example, that indeed uh, for rice, we, we see that in some parts uh, of the world, the price elasticity is bigger than in other countries. Okay. You, you are saying that in Indonesia, you are very sensitive to the, the price change of rice. Mm -hmm. But I can say that here in Belgium, we are not sensitive to the rise yeah. uh, of, uh, of the price or the changes of price of rice. Mm -hmm. um, how uh, well? How can you manage this? Mm -hmm. uh, I think there is um, there is government who has a, a big responsibility of um, of of of, of uh, helping uh, countries yeah. where the price elasticity is very high. You, mm -hmm. you don't need to help countries where price elasticity is is very low. Mm -hmm. Because don't, they don't react as much on the change of price. Mm -hmm. But where you have countries where the reaction on the change of price is very high, mm -hmm. I think government has a responsibility to okay. make the uh, market uh, quiet again. So okay. there will not be a bit of a disturbance on the market. Okay, let's go ahead. Thank you. Good question. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Balwan, for the questions. Well, students from the microeconomics A, microeconomics B, and also from microeconomics Q, Q. 
Is there any questions? Maybe I will start with the leading questions. Another question that uh, after this, I hope the students can have uh, another idea about uh, the elasticity itself. So Dr. Ilse, what do you think about the influence uh, or the effect of this pandemic uh, towards elasticity in the global market? You mean the COVID pandemic? Yes. Yeah, indeed. I think that um, what we are seeing now is very um, exceptional. So it's, it's, it's very interesting uh, from an economical point of view to, to see what will happen to price elasticity of uh, several products when we are now in a time where there is a pandemic and, and a, a very raw air situation like COVID, and we have never seen this before. Well, for some reasons we have, because we also know what happens when you have World War I and World War II. So when there is a war, we actually have a little bit of the same situation. Nevertheless, um, our, um, uh, our way of living is different than it was 100 years or 50 years ago. So um, I'm very interested to know um, how it, um, what will the economic um, causes will be of, uh, of this COVID. And I'm thinking that you're going to see how price elastic some products are. And I'm thinking about luxury products. Um, I think that uh, people will see how elastic, how price sensitive those products are, because that will be um, will be the first uh, victims of this pandem uh, pandemic, of this COVID pandemic, and we are going to see how inelastic, how price inelastic some other products are, like food like basic products. Also in food, you have a difference in, in kind of products. Uh, you have bread or rice or water um, that are basic food products. And you have luxury food products like champagne, for example, caviar, uh, uh, some kind of uh, meat uh, and fish in Belgium is, is also very luxury. So you will see that Indeed, the, the, the change in price will have a, a big effect on, uh, on the quantity. Actually, we saw it already in Belgium because the fish is, um, is, is kind of a luxury product in Belgium. And um, due to the first uh, lockdown in March, um, they can't, uh, the fishers didn't fish anymore because they, they, may, they were not allowed to go to sea here in Belgium. And so the offer of fish was, was, was very small. On the other hand, we saw that restaurants were closing. And so restaurants are the, the, the biggest uh, demand, the biggest demanders for, for fish here in Belgium. So demand was declined. And what did we see about the price? The effect we saw on the price was that price was falling uh, enormously, and the reaction on the demand for the, the, the customers was, was very small. So indeed, we, we, we saw it already happening in Belgium that the effect of price and the effect on, on, on demand uh, for some luxury products. And I, I think that it's going to be uh, the fact, uh, more the fact when, uh, when you have the second lockdown now. Okay. Oh, so today is the second lockdown in Belgium? Yes, indeed. Now we are sitting in uh, our second lockdown because normally I, have, I was willing to teach from our university college. I wasn't sitting here in my study room. Um, but uh, we're not allowed to get out anymore up until uh, the 3rd of November. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
yes during this pandemic the price elasticity for the uh, I, i do i do agree with you for the luxury product is getting higher now i think not only luxury product here in indonesia uh, for example we have the horeca industry hotel restaurant and cafe also of the first lockdown the occupancy is no more than 25 percent so yeah uh, some of them going to be uh bankrupt and then some of them trying to survive of course with their new innovations if if they if they didn't put any innovation on the product i don't believe that it will declining from the market and uh, yeah we know that some some of them are already declining here in indonesia as well because they cannot survive the market during this pandemic yeah so, so okay, when you see the demand uh, the price of demand um, the way we are flexible to uh, the changes uh, or the, the, the COVID mm -hmm. pandemic, the more flexible we are, we will see the, the, the steeper the, the demand curve will, will be and, and we will survive. If we are not flexible and we don't have any enough time, uh, the impact on the demand will be big. So you have a big price elasticity and then you will see that indeed there will go a lot of companies better. Yes. 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 I do agree with you. And then here, uh, also for, for our students, they are they are coming from a different city, and also maybe the pandemic uh, uh, influence uh, indifferently in a, every city. In this, maybe I can ask uh, one of our students, Mas Rehan Rajare. Are you here? Or uh, anyone, maybe you would like to share about the how was the price elasticity going during this pandemic in your city? Because I'm here in Surabaya, and maybe some other students are staying in Jakarta, in Aceh, in a different places. So maybe it will affect differently. Rehan is not here. Okay, maybe Ms. Rayindrana? Don't worry, students. I'm glad, I'm glad that when we go international, that the students are a little bit the same. They are afraid of speaking out loud. Yeah. <laughs> no worries, that's right. Oh, I, I saw there is a one student raise the hand. Huh? Yeah, yes, Muhammad. Yes, please. Hello, Mr. Hello, Miss Dewi Saktia. And hello. hello. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not really good at English. No uh, problem. Yes. I want to explain uh, how elasticity effect, uh, pandemic effect of the elasticity in my city. So my house is close with Batu City. Uh, the mm, places like zoo, like uh, swimming pool, price is falls uh, is significant, but people still uh, not interesting to go there. So that's the effect of the pandemic for my city. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Olya. In the, indeed, uh, you will you'll see a, a, in some kind of regions a, a big reaction on um, on, on the COVID uh, pandemic, um, a big reaction in, in the quantity or uh, depending on what the price will do. Yes, indeed. Thank you, uh, Olya. Yes, Dr. Ilse. As uh, Mas Olya Mohammed already mentioned, that Batu is one of uh, the most designated tourism place in a yeah in a east java area because of this pandemic all all the uh what's it the as i mentioned about the hotel and other also another tourism places are closed because there are there are nobody coming yes yes <laughs> out there. Mm -hmm. thank you mas aulia 
And what about the others? Do you have any questions in regard to the price elasticity? But Rindu, do you want to share or do you have any questions? Uh, no, Miss, I'm sorry. It's okay. Don't worry. It's okay. <laughs> Don't worry, indeed. <laughs> okay, I think I just saw one student raise the hand. Masri and Dipawan. Yes, the time is yours, please. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, maybe I'll ask Mr. Alex Ertz. Uh, in sports like basketball or football, we know uh, there is like player trade, buying or selling player to one club to another club. Uh, could we explain that phenomena with uh, supply and demand concept? Uh, because we know that the quantity of the player is only one. Uh, thank you. Like that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you uh, for your question. Um, well, what we see here is, um, is indeed the result of, of demand and supply. Because if you, if you have a lot of interests in kind of sports, you will see that that indeed there is a, a lot of of, uh, of demand for for that kind of sport. It will up lever the price. The price will rise. Um, so first of all, we have to see the market of the sports in general. Um, when I'm seeing here in Belgium, the, the football is 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 quite popular, and so the prices of the players um, is is very high because there is a, a big market for football. Um, when we are seeing other sports, uh, uh, cycling is very popular in Belgium. So we see that the prices of, of, um, of cycling sports, uh, when it's going, or it's, it's, it's the price for the, the, the sportman, or it's uh, uh, the price of, of advertisement, or it's the price of the, the television rights. Price is very high for football and for cycling in Belgium because it's a big market. Okay, so we have a lot of uh, demand for, for that kind of sport. Other sports that are not very popular in Belgium, um, giving an example, um, skiing, because Belgium has that kind of a weather like skiing is popular. Uh, well, there is no demand for for skiing as 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 a as a as a sport. So prices concerning skiing are very low. Okay, that's that's one part. The other part that you're mentioning is how is it that one player is sold for so much and another player is sold for so little? Uh, that's quality, of course, and 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 that's something. That's not the, the effect of, of uh, demand and supply. It's the effect of, of the quality you have. When you are a good player, you can ask a lot of money um, for the qualities you have. And when you're not a good player, yeah, you, you can't ask anything for, uh, for, your, uh, for yourself as a, as a player. So, Quality is another aspect in, in how prices um, will, will get uh, in the market, how products are priced in the market. I hope this is enough answer for your question. Uh, okay, thank you for the answer. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you very much for your question. Okay, thank you, Mastrian. All right, is there any questions? Because it seems that the time is uh, already 3 p.m. in Surabaya. 
Okay, I will, will look to my my uh, cell phone here. It's nine o'clock. <laughs> ah, it's nine o'clock. <laughs> It's nine o'clock. Yeah, so, so it's a five, uh, yeah, five, five hours difference, I yes, think. Yes, yes, indeed, yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is uh, one other question. Uh, I believe it will be the last question, I think. Okay. Uh, Mbak Sali, Putri Sali Mariana. Yeah. Get the time oh, yes. here. Yes, yes, yeah. uh, oh, Sorry. Uh, as I discussed uh, earlier about the impact of COVID-19 in uh, price LSTC, elasticity, uh, how long it will take to restore the economy in, in one country? And what should done, what should done by a, a government to be done about it? Okay, okay. Um, uh, thank you for your... Uh... Thank, yeah question uh, I, I'm going to rephrase it if I understand it well um, so your question was that um, what can government do in the situation we're in now um, to restore the economy um, knowing that you have price elasticity uh, on, on several products uh, um, is it right is that correct yeah yeah, okay, okay. Um, well, first of all, I think government has to make a study uh, of uh, the different kind of products, the diff different kind of industries there are in, in their country on how uh, price elastic uh, the products are. Do you have a, a, a great price elasticity? Or do you have a, a less price elasticity of the several industries that are important for your country? Depending on the price elasticity of um, of the, the industry of the product, you, you can give some uh, subsidies to to that uh, kind of industries that are uh, very uh, sensitive to prices. Um, because if you are giving little subsidies, you will have a big effect on on the quantity, like we saw in my presentation, and you will get a big effect. Uh, on your economy in the end. Um, knowing that, that if you are giving a little bit of a subsidy, a little bit of money from the government to uh, the people or to the producers, that there will be a big of a reaction uh, on, on the quantity that's produced, that's demand, you can up-level your, uh, your economy. I think the first step is to, to oversee how uh, elastic uh, your uh, prices are for your different kind of industries. And then you can say, okay, if we want, because that's another question, do we want to um, um, rescue the industry or not? Okay, that's another question. Some industries, don't deliver some uh, adjusted value to your economy. And I don't think you have to uh, rescue an industry that doesn't deliver an adjusted value to your economy. So that's another uh, uh, topic. Maybe I can come back to explain that other topic, but nevertheless, that's if you want to, to rescue an industry, you first of all have to know how elastic you are um, your product, your prices, do they really react on the price? You have to give a little bit of money. If they don't react enough to prices, you have to give a lots of money to rescue your industry. So my advice to the government is make sure that you know how elastic the prices of your different industries are. And then the second step is you can help them by giving a little bit of money or a lot of money in form of subsidies or uh, decreased taxes or something like that. I hope that's uh, an answer of your your question, uh, Putri. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Miss Ilse, for your for your answer. Thank you very much for your question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mbak Sally, Mbak Putri Sally, for the questions. 
So, uh, Dr. Ilse, uh, actually, we would like to have you, you know, more time to explain about the uh, our materials. But yeah, the time goes to end. So I do hope that uh, all the students can get the beneficial of this lecture uh, about the price elasticity that you have already uh, explained to us. Uh, very great. So thank you very much. We do hope you can fly maybe in the near future. Hope everything getting better and we can meet each other directly and you can meet the student as well. Because yeah, I, I believe they will be very happy to meet you uh, directly. Yes, so thank, yes. You very thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for joining your international week. In fact, I was planned to come over uh, last academic year in April, uh, but due to the COVID, uh, my trip was, uh, was indeed cancelled. So I'm first on the list when the pandemic is over to come and uh, visit you and give you all uh, a hug waiting for you here thank okay. you again thank you very and much. You there. thank you okay thank you very much uh, for all the participation so i'll give the microphone back to the uh, master of ceremony thank you okay thank you uh, mrs dewi safia uh, time flies so fast that our even today has come to an end for any crying question we could not Answer to the invitation. Please notice, let us know by email to mbusiness at ics.id. So we have reached the end of this event. Um, we would like to express our great appreciation for the guest speaker, Mrs. Ilse, and who already shared her knowledge to us. We also would like to thank all participants today. We do hope everyone enjoy and insightful, fruitful, and productive meeting. On behalf of this organizing committee, SDMC, we would like to apologize for any inconvenience that might be happen during this event. So uh, we would like to invite you all in the first world group photo. So please kindly share your best smile by turning on the video. OK, uh, I will start counting um all right can you turn on your video okay now dr ilse can see directly the students <laughs> yes now i can indeed see hmm. yeah i will counting all right it's already Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Once more. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Yeah. Um. Thank you, guys. Thank you for Mrs. Ilse, um, Mrs. Dewi. Have a good day and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.